Okay. Okay, let's pray, right? We just commit this day into God's hands. Let's pray and ask the Lord to speak to us. Okay. Father God, we, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for your, Lord, mercies are new every morning. We thank you that your faithfulness, Lord, is um, never ending, God. We thank you for your grace that you've lavished upon us, Father God. And Master, we commit this day into your mighty hands. Lord, we pray that you would speak to us, God. Lord, we pray that you would minister to our hearts, Lord. Lord, we pray that we would grow in our understanding, Lord, of you, Father God. Lord, we ask that today, God, that we will be drawn closer to you, O oh Father God, Lord, than before, O oh Master. And I just pray, Father God, that even as we open our hearts to you, Master, Lord, we pray that, uh, Lord, that you would speak to us, that you would pour out your spirit upon us, God. Lord, that you would write your word upon our hearts, Father God, and our minds, O oh Master. Yes, Lord, we open our hearts to you. Come on, let's just pray and then just say, Lord, we open our hearts to you. Speak to us, Lord. And let's just invite him. Right? Invite his presence. Invite him in our midst and uh, ask him to minister to us. Ask him to um, maybe remove certain things in us. Uh, ask him to soften our hearts. Right? Um, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Master. We thank you, Father God. Come, Lord, we invite you, Lord, to have your way in our lives, Father God. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Have your way, God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you. We bless your name. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory at this time. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Uh, how many of you have joined only today? Uh, you were not there yesterday or day before. Anybody like that? Okay, this morning, okay, one, two, three, okay, okay. Anybody online who joined us only this morning, today, um, you can probably raise your hands. Um, okay, okay, I see a few hands, right. Okay, so this week we've been taking some time to um, have a kind of an orientation, um, just to give us an idea about what is to come, right? for the rest of this semester and the rest of this year. So taking time to settle down and uh, lay some foundational things. And then we will start our regular classes um, as we've been, as it's been announced from Monday onwards, right? Okay. Okay. So today we're going to uh, take some time to, to look at this whole aspect of um, the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Okay. And specifically, we're going to look at what the Bible calls as the baptism with the Holy Spirit or baptism in the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, right? So what it is, and um, and we're just going to look at uh, several verses. So you can have your Bibles handy. So we're going to look at some of the scriptures and uh, what does the Bible speak about or talk, teach us about this whole thing of uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay, Gertrude, I'm just going to mute your mic. Your mic is unmuted. Okay. Okay, so um, so all of us know that we have been given this wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, right? As believers, you know, we have this privilege of being led by the Holy Spirit. Right? We've been given the privilege of being taught by the Holy Spirit, right? And also being empowered, strengthened by the Holy Spirit. Right? And it is a privilege of every believer, all believers, right? If you say, okay, I'm a believer, I'm a, I'm a child of God, I follow Jesus, this is the privilege for each and every believer. Okay? To be led, to be guided, to be taught, to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. And He's with us always. Right? He's with us always. So what we're going to look at is what the Lord Jesus taught about. He said to, the, he said to his disciples that you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. You will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So these people were, had already followed Jesus for about three, three and a half years. Right? They were already following, with, following him. They were listening to his teaching. They were witnesses to all that the Lord did. Right, so and in fact, the Lord also um, gave him, sent them on some missions. He, he sent them. He said, "You go teach, 
you go heal. So they'd all seen all that, right? And to the disciples, he says, I'm going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So this is something which is uh, of importance, something which is relevant to all of us as believers and as disciples. Okay, so let's turn to Matthew chapter 3. Okay, if you have the book and online students, if you have the PDF, um, you can turn in that. Right, so we are going to look at uh, chapter 1 where the Lord says he will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Right, so chapter 1. So we look at this scripture, Matthew chapter 3 verses 11 and 12. Okay, where the Lord says, I indeed baptize you with water, sorry, where John the Baptist says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor, floor and gather his wheat into the barn. And he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. You know, if you recall, the first day, laying the axe to the root, right? We looked at this very scripture, right? Where it talks about the refining, cleansing work of the Holy Spirit with the Lord announced and, you know, which, uh, which John announced. And he says, this is what he will do. The Lord will do this. Okay, so he's saying the Lord Jesus, he is going to do something. He, what is he going to do? He's going to baptize you baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Okay, So this is something that we're saying exclusively Jesus will do. He, what is John doing? He's baptizing them in water unto repentance and he's pointing to Jesus and he's saying Jesus is coming. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So what is this baptism? Right? The word baptism means to immerse completely. <clears throat> to immerse completely, to cover completely. And in fact, it was a word which was used by, um, you know, those days, the, the people who were dyeing these garments, right? So they would immerse that garment completely in that dye or the color uh, or, or the paint or whatever. And they will immerse it so that the garment becomes completely uh, uh, soaked or filled with that color of that paint. Okay. So that is what it means. It means to immerse completely. So the Lord is saying that, uh, so John is saying that, you know, the Lord Jesus is going to immerse, overwhelm, cover, fill you with the Holy Spirit. Okay, And he's, who's, who's he talking to? Uh, he's talking to, you know, the people who came for, uh, who he was baptizing with water. Okay, Now, the Lord himself says something about this. Okay, Let's look at um, uh, Luke chapter... Luke 24, I think. Yeah, Luke chapter 24, verses 48 and 49. Okay, Luke chapter 24, verse 48. Now, this is the Lord Jesus. He's talking to his disciples. He's teaching his disciples. What is he saying? He says, okay, you are witnesses of these things. Verse 48, verse 49. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry or wait in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Endued means until you are clothed, until you are covered. Right? So he's saying you wait in Jerusalem. Okay. He say, what is he referring to? He's saying, I will send the promise of my father upon you. You know, this phrase, promise of my father, is referring to the work of the Holy Spirit. Okay. The infilling work of the Holy Spirit, and we see that in John chapter, uh, John chapter twelve or 15, 14, 15, he's, he's talking about the promise of the Father. He will send the promise of the Father. Right. So, in Acts chapter one, just before he's uh, he's taken up into heaven, the Lord Jesus again talks about this to his disciples. Right. If you look at Acts chapter one and verse four, what does he say? Acts chapter one, verse four. It says, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. You know, I've already told you about this. So wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father. Okay. And he says in verse, uh, verse 5, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit 
not many days from now okay so so which means that for the lord jesus this was something which was very important that he wanted to give or he wanted his disciples to experience so he's already taught them while they were with him now he's going to be ascending to the father so he's giving them another instruction he's saying what is he saying don't leave jerusalem be there till you are baptized with the holy spirit and you know you it, it'll happen uh, uh, baptized sorry uh, baptized with the holy spirit promise of my father will come upon you you wait uh, there and till you are baptized with the holy spirit not many days from now and he goes on to say in verse 8 why they should be baptized okay what does he say in verse 8 anybody can anybody read verse 8 oops verse 8 what does he say okay yeah right okay so what is this is verse 8 of acts chapter 1 okay but you shall receive power when the holy spirit comes upon you right and you shall be witnesses to me and he refers to the places jerusalem judea samaria uttermost parts of the earth so this is what will happen. You will receive power and you will be witnesses. You will testify of me. You will witness about me. Okay? So the Lord is uh, he's saying, this is what will happen. I want you to wait in Jerusalem. I'm going to baptize with you with the Holy Spirit. And the result, end result, objective of being baptized is that I want you to be witnesses with my power. Okay? So when we talk about the power of God, you know, we, we know that the power of God is present to heal to deliver to um, you know for for miracles and signs and wonders the power of god is present to the release of the gifts of the spirit and so on so the, what is the lord saying i want you fully baptized with the holy spirit and i want to release this power within you and cover you with this so that you can be witnesses with my power right so you can be witnesses with my power you can witness with power not just mere words, but witness with power. You know, power would mean even power, you know, transformative power of God, power of compassion and power to love the unlovable, power to forgive the unforgivable and the, everything else, like the whole ministry of Jesus, signs, wonders, miracles, deliverance, etc., gifts of the Holy Spirit, everything. So he's saying you shall be witnesses with power, right? Till you are endued with power from on high. Okay. So let's move on to chapter 2. Okay, So chapter 2 is interesting. We see, uh, we're going to look at five instances or five incidents in the book of Acts. Okay, So the Lord Jesus saying to his disciples, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit and with power. Why? Because the, he wants them to be, he wants them to be, why does he want to baptize them? Because he wants them to be witnesses, right? Witnesses with power. That's the reason, right? Okay. So now when we look at the, the book of Acts, we read about five separate instances where people were baptized in the Holy Spirit. Okay. So let's study that. Okay. Um, first, first incident is in Acts chapter 2. Okay. You look at Acts chapter 2 and verse 1 says when the day of pentecost had fully come they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and one sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the holy spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them Utterance. Okay, so in obedience to Jesus, they were all there, they were all gathered, and this was 50 days after the, 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 the first of the feast of first fruits. It was like a harvest festival, so they're all there. And it says the day of Pentecost had fully come, right? It was the 50th day, and suddenly there's something supernatural happened. What do we read there? Something supernatural. There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. 
they, they were all in a closed room in a closed house and there was a sudden sound of a right rushing sorry a rushing mighty wind it filled the whole house and they also noticed that there were tongues of fire which was on each on top of each of them right flames of fire resting on each on top of each of their heads right and it says they were all filled with the holy spirit and they began to speak what did they speak they began to speak with other tongues or other languages and it says here as the spirit gave them utterance which means the spirit gave them the words or spirit gave them the language holy spirit but they spoke these languages okay so this is what we see they were baptized they were uh, it also says you know if you look at um, uh, verse 4 they were filled with the holy spirit so which means that when you say i'm baptized with the holy spirit or filled with the holy spirit right it's 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 the same thing okay now there were about 120 disciples they were all baptized filled with the holy spirit on that day and some unusual things happen the sound of a rushing mighty wind flames of fire and so on okay now what happens here after that there were some unusual responses okay people who were there a lot of people had gathered there because it was the feast of first fruits and feast of pentecost they're all they gathered in jerusalem okay so look let's look at this what were the responses uh, verse 7 okay they were all amazed and marveled why were they amazed why were they marvel marveling why were they surprised any idea they were all amazed they all marveled it says why anyone yeah so they were speaking in yeah. the language of the people who had gathered there right it was it was not the it was not the hebrew language it was not you know any other language which these people had learned so it says here they were all amazed so what did they say look are not all these who speak galileans right and uh, how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born right and they go on to say parthians in verse 9 parthians and medes okay everybody has their bible in front you have a bible bible there okay open it open it to acts chapter 2 right everybody so when we look at when we say okay the scripture you look in either look into your notes or you look into the bible okay now um acts chapter 2 and verse 9 okay it says parthians and medes and elamites and you know uh, those dwelling in mesopotamia which means that all these from all these regions people had come and it all different languages and here they were saying okay how come these disciples are speaking our language it's not something that they had learnt how come they are speaking their you know our language now it's like you know somebody how many of you speak telugu telugu okay how many of you speak hindi hindi is your you know okay and how many of you speak uh, kannada kannada okay malayalam okay bengali <laughs> okay uh, i knew that that's right so we all have, you know speak different languages this is the language that we're born with right you born so the so suppose i was filled with the holy spirit and i started speaking in malayalam now malayalam is a language i don't know right or telugu is a language that i don't know i can identify that it's telugu but i don't know the language now suppose you know i got filled with the holy spirit and i started speaking to you in malayalam i i started you know preaching in malayalam or preaching in telugu that is what happened so they were amazed they said hey this is a language they don't know i know for sure that they don't know the language how can they speak these languages right and they were about 120 disciples so it must have been a, you know they are all speaking and praising god it says they were praising god and all that um you know they they say in verse 11 says we hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of god right so they are all amazed so this is well this was a supernatural work supernatural meaning it is not a language that they learnt right how do you learn a language alphabets grammar 
right? Certain phrases. That's how you learn a language or you listen to a language and you try practicing it. But this was something different from that. This was a supernatural work of God. So they started speaking these languages. It says the Holy Spirit gave them the words and they spoke it out. Okay, Something for us to understand. Okay, So people were amazed. But people were also perplexed, meaning they were troubled. How can this be? How can this happen? And some people also made fun of them. They said, okay, these people are drunk. I think, they, you know, the way they were speaking and you know, they were praising God. And uh, obviously, which means that there were certain you know, words that they were speaking, which didn't seem to make sense, which seems like they were blabbering something. And so said, hey, these people are drunk. So they made fun of them. They mocked them. Okay. So this is one instance that we see that... Um, uh, you, know, you know, all this happening, then Peter stands up and Peter is telling them, he's preaching to them. He says, you know, we are not drunk. These people are not drunk. But this is something that was prophesied, that was already written for us in the scriptures by prophet Joel. Joel chapter 2, you know, verse 28. So talks about, he's referring that, right? He's referring to that verse and he says, you know, this is what Joel said in the last days, God said he will pour out his spirit and, you know, sons and daughters shall prophesy and all those things. So this is what Joel prophesied. This is that. Okay, so he explains to them. Okay, so we see this. People were baptized. They spoke in other languages. Okay, then we move on to um, Acts chapter 8. Okay, Acts chapter 8. In Acts chapter 8, we see again people being filled with the Holy Spirit and we see something supernatural happening there as well. Okay, So in Acts chapter 8, this is in a place called Samaria, in the city of Samaria. Okay, People had gone from Jerusalem to Samaria because in Jerusalem there was persecution. Okay, If you were following Jesus, they were being arrested, they were being troubled, they were thrown into prison. So they, people moved from Jerusalem to surrounding regions. And one such person was a person, disciple by name, Philip. Right? So Philip went from Jerusalem, went to Samaria, and he preached the gospel there. He said, hey, this is what Jesus did in my life. You know, you believe in the name of the Lord, you will be saved. He preached the gospel in Samaria. So there in Samaria, when people heard the gospel, when people received the good news, they were born again. They got saved. They received Jesus into their hearts. Okay? So the Bible says that Acts chapter 8, and if you look at verse, verse 7, verse 6, right? Verse 6 says, And multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. Okay. Not only that, but if you go down to verse 12. Verse 12, what does he say? When they believed Philip, as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, and in the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Okay. So they believed, they were baptized. And in fact, it says, Simon, there was a magician or a sorcerer named Simon. He himself believed and he was baptized. So what is this baptism it's talking about? It's talking about water baptism. In the name of Jesus, they were baptized in water. Okay, Baptism as a sign of repentance, as a sign of belonging to Jesus, saying, I want to follow Jesus. Right? They were baptized in Jesus' name. So we see that happening. So they were all believers. Yes? They believed in Jesus. They were born again. In fact, you know, they, many of them were healed. Many of them were delivered. And it also says that, um, you know, there was great joy in that city. Now, when the disciples in Jerusalem heard about this, okay, they heard that, okay, in Samaria, people are saved. People have received Jesus. When they heard that, they sent Peter and John. Okay? Peter and John, apostles who went from Jerusalem to Samaria. So, Peter and John, when they reach there, they do 
they do something unusual. Okay, this is what they do. This is what we read here. Okay, verse 15. Acts chapter 8, verse 15. Who, when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet, he had fallen upon none of them. They had been baptized. They only had been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Verse 17. Then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Okay, so something happened. They went there. They prayed for them. They laid hands on them. The Bible says that they received the Holy Spirit. Now, they had already become believers. That's something that we need to understand. They were already believers. When you believe, do you receive the Holy Spirit or not? Yeah. Because we are born again by the work of the Holy Spirit. We come to repentance and we are born again by the Holy Spirit. Right? In fact, it is the Holy Spirit. It is He who, you know, recreates our spirit, regenerates that you know, the whole aspect of being born again, being made alive is by the Holy Spirit. So all of us have the Holy Spirit when we are born again. But here it talks about something else. You know, he, they have the Holy Spirit, but they come when they pray. It says the Holy Spirit fell upon them. You no, know? it says as yet he had not fallen. So he's talking about another experience, a deeper experience for the disciples, for those who are born again. It's for the disciples. Qualifying factor, they need to be born again. They need to be a follower of the Lord Jesus. So they are baptized. They are filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, something happens there. Okay, verse 18. This man called Simon, who's actually a magician, a, a black magic magician, witchcraft and all that. So he sees this. Okay, so he sees these disciples laying hands and praying. And he says... Verse 19, give me this power also that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, so what happened when the disciples laid hands and prayed over the, you know, when, when Peter and John prayed over these disciples? It says they were, yeah, so something happened. Okay, so Simon saw there was some change. There was some change in the people on whom they had laid hands and prayed. Right? So he says, I'll give you this money. You take this money. I want this power. What happened the first time when there were people were filled with the Holy Spirit? Acts chapter 2, we saw. They spoke in other tongues. tongues. Yeah, yeah, they spoke in other languages, other tongues, right? So here we don't see that being mentioned. It doesn't say. They all spoke in tongues. It doesn't say that. But we can conclude, we can infer, yeah, something supernatural happened. Something that Simon could see and hear that he came to this conclusion. Hey, I want this. And I'm going to give you, offer you money. I want this power. Right? Why did Simon say that? Because Simon, you know, if you read about that, him in the previous verses, he was a magician and everybody looked up to him. Right? Before the gospel was preached, everybody looked up to him. He would, you know, he would do all this magic and, and you know, probably call on the powers of darkness. He would do all this. And so people thought, you know, here's a man who's you know, something great, who has great power. Right? But now everything seems to have changed. Now, there seems to be a greater power. Right? People are being born again. They are saved. They are healed. They are delivered. Evil spirits are you know, going out of them. And then, on top of that, here is something. You know, people are being filled with the Spirit. They are receiving a supernatural experience. And probably they were also, very strongly we could say that they were also praying in tongues, other tongues. So he says, I want this power. You know, I want to do the same thing to other people. You know, maybe now he feels that, oh, uh, I need to prove myself. I need to, you know, again, regain my popularity and regain all that I've lost. So he says, I'll give you money. So Peter has some strong words to tell him. He says, you know, you have no part in this. You need to repent because he says uh, in, in verse, um, yeah, I think it was um, verse 23, right? Verse 23, he says, For I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by 
inequity so he was he was he was offended he was feeling bitter right now i can't you know i i seem to have lost my power these guys are you know seem to have something more right he was bitter in his heart so peter says that you know repent and uh, you know may god forgive you i see you are actually poisoned by bitterness and uh, bound by iniquity okay so that was the second instance that we see in the book of acts where people were baptized in the holy spirit and something supernatural happened and we can we can strongly say that they they also prayed in tongues okay okay then we look at another instance which is in the next chapter acts chapter 9 okay this is about saul the apostle paul now he is going from we we know about him right he is on his way to damascus and he has this encounter with the lord jesus he falls off the animal which he was you know traveling on he sees this bright light he hears his voice he has his encounter with jesus and he gets up he cannot see right he's blinded he cannot see so people take him and they take him to this house um in a street called straight and then you know he's there he's waiting okay now let's look at acts chapter 9 verse 10 okay acts chapter 9 verse 10 It says now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias and to him the lord said in a vision Ananias and he said here i am lord so the lord said to him arise and go to the street called straight and inquire at the house of judas for one called Saul of Tarsus for behold he is praying and in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight Then Ananias answered, "Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name." But the Lord said to him, "Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake." Verse 17, and Ananias went his way entered the house and laying his hand on him hands on him he said brother Saul the lord jesus who appeared to you on the road as you came has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the holy spirit immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales and he received his sight at once and he arose and was baptized so this is what we read about Saul the apostle Paul So he's sitting there. The Lord speaks to Ananias. Ananias, go pray over Saul. He's my, he's my, you know, he's my chosen vessel, and you, you know, he's he's not able to see. Now you go and pray, and I will heal him. And so he goes, he prays, and it says, Ananias goes and says that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And it says that he could immediately see. He got up. He was baptized, meaning he was baptized in water. but when we read about saul or paul apostle paul did he also encounter or have something supernatural at the time when he was filled with the holy spirit right because ananias went prayed what do you think did he encounter something supernatural did he also pray in tongues right it's not it's not mentioned there right but we when we read first corinthians right when we read first corinthians paul is actually writing to the corinthian church about all that he taught them when he was with them right so he's actually writing to them reminding them and instructing them he, one of the things that he instructs them is about the gifts of the holy spirit he said these are the gifts of the holy spirit this is how you must use the spirit uh, use the gifts of the spirit move in the gifts of the spirit and in 1 corinthians 14 and i think it's verse 18 right he says i thank god because i speak in tongues more than you all right so he's making this declaration or testifying about himself hey this is what i do i speak in tongues i pray in tongues more than you all which means he's saying i spend a lot of time praying in tongues okay so we can conclude okay when ananias laid hands and prayed 
it says he came with this specific thing that he might be able to see and also to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So we see that, yes, probably at that time he started praying in holy in in you know in, in tongues or eventually he did right so that he's saying here in 1 corinthians 14 you know um this is what i came to do and i i pray in tongues more than you all okay so um we'll take a quick break and come back at 10 o'clock right um we'll take a break now and come back at 10 okay Okay, I see some raised hands, Sandeep Das, Venkatesan. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can actually put it in the chat and uh, we'll answer them when we come back after the break, right? Thank you.